Hey everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video. I figured I'd take some time today and put together an SKS for everybody who's relatively new to the game or maybe show some of you more veteran players something you haven't seen before because even I learned a couple of things putting these together. First thing I want to talk about is how the SKS and the OPSKS differ and they don't differ at all. Literally their stats are exactly the same. The only difference between these two rifles is the fact that you can put the dovetail mount on the OPSKS. You can't put it on the SKS. So that has to do with how you mount sights, which we'll get into that into a little bit later. So really that's the only difference. So everything I talk about with the OPSKS going forward is going to apply to the SKS. Um, I'm just going to focus on the SP OP to keep things simple. So the first thing we'll talk about after the guns is the mags. So you have three choices of mags for the SKSs. You have the 10 round internal box, you have the 20 round magazine and you have the 35 round magazine. All of these can be top loaded through the gun without uh, having to take the mag out. Uh, the difference is, is that once this is in, in raid, you can't change it. You have, you have to top load. These magazines allow you to, to do external swaps, but it doesn't limit you to that. You can actually top load even when you're using those. So after that, we'll talk about rounds here real quick. So per the Tarkov wiki, we have the ballistics, uh, the ballistics page on the Tarkov wiki. The HP round here has 87 flush damage and 15 penetration. The US round is 56 damage and 29 pen. It's also a subsonic round, so its velocity is very, very low. The T45 um, is a tracer round. This is what you find off of uh, Rashala's boys usually. It has 62 flush damage and 30 penetration. The PS round is 57 damage and 32 pen. And then the Big Daddy BP round, which is 58 damage and 47 penetration. This guy will get through all level 4 armors and even and even put a hurting on level 5 for folks wearing it. After the rounds, we'll move on to the barrel attachments. Now, the SKS is actually pretty simple with what you can do for barrels. You have the direct attached suppressor, the Hexagon SKS. Uh, 762 by 39 suppressor this bolts right onto the end of the barrel nothing needed simple as that it is available from skier level three also it's right now it's cheaper to buy off the flea market um but skier level three sells it as an item for traders uh, after that you have everything else has to be attached with the uh, th the thread adapter so this is the weapons tuning sks thread adapter and this is available from jaeger at level two and it's pretty inexpensive. So you throw this thing on the SKS, and now you have a threaded end on your barrel. And you can go with the more expensive Zenit DTK 4M. Or any of your barrel attachments here. The SRVV is your highest recoil reduction at 9. The DTK1 is negative 7. And then your two standard AKs are both negative 5. And these you can find on most AKs. And they go on top of this uh, thread adapter as well. So now that we've gotten those out of the way, the next thing we'll look at is stocks. So everybody's seen these two stocks, your uh, OPSKS and your 56 Alpha. The only difference between these two is the color. They have the exact same stats. They do nothing different. They have no different attachments. There's nothing that they can't that you can do with these that you can't do with the other. So when you throw that onto the SKS, you get a completed weapon. You can take this thing out and shoot it. Um, just make sure that you have your rear sight on Sometimes these are missing, and it makes it pretty hard to shoot if you don't have it. So there's not much to talk about these stocks, so we'll get them out of the way. Your next stop coming up is your TAPCO. So this guy here uh, can go on both the SKS and the OPSKS as well. Now the advantage to putting it on an SKS, um, I don't know if you'd say advantage, but the ability to put this on an SKS is the only way that you can actually put a sight on this thing. So you can actually take a... Uh, a red dot and put it all the way up on front like this. I don't like it. I hate shooting SKSs that I find like that, um, but I find them. So I, some people obviously like them. So we'll go back to the OP here. Uh, with this stock, I'm sorry, with this handguard, you actually need to put the tube on uh, and the, a pistol grip. Now this thing only has one pistol grip available. The SKS interfuse kit Tapco thingy here. That's the only pistol grip you can put on this guy. I'll show you here in the flea market. See, that's it. The only one that's available. 
So we'll throw that on there. And with the, the, the Tapco tube, you can now put any M4 style stock on this thing. So your choices are as big as anybody else's. So you can mix and match and find the stock you love for the purpose you want. I usually just run the MOE because it's kind of an all around. Gives you really good recoil and real good ergo. But if you want to maximize your ergo or maximize your recoil, there's stocks that allow you to do that as well. Uh, one thing else that this also allows for you to do is put four grips on it. So I have the three most extreme versions, if you will. Um, the RK2 is your highest recoil reduction at negative two. Your shift is your highest ergo adder at 11. And your RK1 is kind of in the middle. So it gives you a four and a three ergo. So it's kind of a balanced. This is the only handguard that'll actually allow you to put four grips on it. So after the top, after the top coat here, we'll pop this out and we'll go down to the FDUAS. This thing has a couple different options. You can't put, it has no stock selection. It just comes with the one that comes on it. Uh, but it allows you to pick from any of the AK pistol grips, essentially. So we'll go to link search here and I'll show you. I didn't buy all of them um, just because I figured it was a little overboard. But all of your standard AK stock or pistol grips are available to put onto this handguard. Uh, so obviously you have your RK th RK3 is at your top end with your 13. Um, you can also go on the discount side with the Ishmash AK uh, plus 6. And that makes this a complete gun at this point. Uh, one thing you can do on both the TAPCO and the OPSKS is you can add uh, laser devices. Uh, this one limits you to the very top. The FD allows you to put them in four different locations, left, right, bottom, center. Now, this thing it can only be a light or laser device down here. You cannot put a foregrip on it. So with those out of the way, we will now talk about sights because that's really the only thing left. I'm going to put this back on the... The Tapco here, and we'll go from there. Move some of these out of the way. So we're go let's go with uh, let's just go with kind of a balanced build here. We'll put the RK1 on. So in order to put sights on the OPSKS, you have to put the dovetail mount on. Once you do that, it opens up a couple of different avenues. You can go with direct mount sights like the EKP8 or the OKP7. They'll just clip right onto the side right there, and you have yourself a red dot. Or you can go with the PSO sights. Um, for another budget uh, scope range, and I'll show you that real quick. So you can go with any of the PSO sites or this night, this uh, kind of junky, weird offset site that I've only found on RAID, but I never use it because I really hate it, um, but to each their own. And then the night site. So basically kind of the same thing you have with AKs. It allows you to do the same kind of attachments. Once you move past the direct attach uh, sites, um, then you have the mounts. So you have the Cobra or the uh, P-Lod. Now, the difference between these two is your Ergo, 0.3, as well as the Cobra allows you to mount a flashlight or laser on the side. So considering as the OPSKS doesn't have side mounts for lasers, I prefer to use the Cobra. So you throw the Cobra on there, and now you can put a... Oops, let's try this again. You can put a laser right on the side of the thing. And then once you have this Cobra on here, you can put any site you want on with the exception of any of the large raid scopes. So all of the red dots, uh, holographics, you know, hammer, PSO, Monstrum, all of these will go on to this thing. So for example, even if you want to run a thermal, you can put a thermal on it and then a canted site up front. And now that is a crazy SKS. I don't know that I'd ever run a thermal on an SKS. It kind of sounds scary. Uh, to lose something, especially with how expensive they've gotten. But you do what you want to do. So what you'll see is a lot of people with like the uh, Valde on this. Because this is a really good option right here. So with that, we'll kind of kit this thing up all the way to do... We'll make this thing a full anti-recoil build. I'm actually going to take the uh, Valde off of it. And we'll put a uh, MRS on it. And we'll take the... RK1 off and put the RK2 on and we could probably go with a better stock. Let's go get the full recoil stock on here real quick, which I believe is the HK1. Okay, so HK1 on there. 
Oh, that put that forward. So we'll put this back here on the Cobra where it belongs. We'll throw a 35 round mag. Let's see what kind of ammo I got. Let's just buy some PS since we're screwing around. And we'll buy 35 rounds. Throw that in there, throw that in there. Put one in the chamber. Let's go into the hideout. And give this thing a whirl. All right, so there's our laser off the side, kind of funky looking. You can see how it's not dead on your point. Now that's me with no real, I wasn't doing anything to move the mouse other than click. So it does settle pretty good and it shoots. And like I said, you can top load. No sweat. Takes a little bit longer, but you don't have to carry mags. Uh, choice is entirely up to you. If you guys found anything in here helpful, please hit like and subscribe down below. It helps the channel out a bunch, and it lets me know the videos you guys uh, actually like watching versus ones you don't, so I don't uh, make stuff that sucks. So as always, I hope you're having good luck in Tarkov, and we'll see you out there.